the monster. We're the monsters. We went to sleep many years ago, and we woke up with a brand new show. It sounds almost as bad as Herman singing in the shower. We're the monsters. We're the monsters. Yeah, you're right. Even I wouldn't want to listen to that while I'm eating. <laughs> you don't have to insult me anymore. Uh, another year, another look back at a Monsters remake slash reboot slash sequel slash whatever you'd like to call it. And they're spin-offs! Though I've covered the two 90s TV movies and Rob Zombie's film previously, I've saved the most divisive attempt at resurrecting the Monsters for this year, with the Monsters Today. Oh no, Lily Poo, you know I'd never let anyone in the whole universe touch my neck bolts but you. <laughs> A sitcom that found the Munsters family being transplanted to the present day. Ripping, shredding, cutting back on a filthy pig. <laughs> well, present day as in 1988. You know what I always said? If you can't beat them, join them. Strangely enough, this show was a lot of kids' introduction to the Munsters. As brace yourselves for this one, it ran for longer than the original 60s series, even having more episodes than it. Oh, darn. Now, for some reason, this show has basically been scrubbed from the planet. It never got an official DVD release, and it's unavailable to watch anywhere. You're dead. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> Hunting down episodes was a challenge in and of itself, let alone sitting through them. One, two, three, four. I saw her across the swamp one night and knew it was love at first sight as toads and snakes slithered by, I hoped that I would catch her eye. So you don't mean you're so tone deaf you actually like that horrible singing. Well, gosh, I... no. <laughs> no. There's a lot to dive into here, though, so let's look back at the monsters today. Oh, goody, goody, goody. What channel is it on? When the Monsters ended its run of 70 episodes in 1966, Universal knew the series had a bright future in syndication. They commissioned the first Monsters movie to coincide with the end of the series, as Monster Go Home hit theaters just one month after the final episode had aired. The movie was an attempt to introduce the characters to foreign audiences, therefore allowing Universal to sell the show into syndication all over the world. Universal was right in their prediction, though, and the Munsters found renewed success in syndication throughout the 70s and later 80s. To capitalize on this, they once again commissioned a Munsters movie, this one made for television in 1981, called The Munsters' Revenge. While Munsters fans have come to appreciate this movie, mostly for being the last time Al Lois, Yvonne DiCarlo, and Fred Gwynn would appear together on screen, young audiences at the time were confused as to why the Munsters they enjoyed watching on TV every week were suddenly, well, old. Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't looked. We're new here. She hasn't been new anywhere in years. The main trio gave the parts their all, but it was clear to the studio that if they wished to keep milking the franchise for more, that the Munsters family would have to be recast. I'm gonna be a household name. Too bad Goofy's already taken. <laughs> And so in 1987, the studio started plotting a follow-up sitcom that would bring the Munsters family to present-day California. Grandpa Munster actor Al Lewis actually auditioned to play Grandpa in this show, but the producers felt it was best to completely start anew with new actors. This is facing life in its bitter reality. You see, the time has come for me to depart. Character actor Howard Morton was cast instead. Now I can betray my principles. Sir, my people will contact your people. Though he was only two years younger than Al Lewis. I'm a very simple person. <laughs> For the man who invented Three Card Monty and the Joy Buzzer. <laughs> Lee Merriweather, most known for portraying Catwoman in the Batman 66 movie, was cast as Lily. You, my irresistible Hermie, alone on a distant planet with leopard skin clad Venusians. Oh. Hmm? Which is ironic, as the Batman TV show led to the original Monsters cancellation. Hello! <laughs> John Shuck was cast as Herman Munster. Who is this critic? What's his name? He's incognito. Oh, Italian! <laughs> Shuck has been very candid in recent years in admitting that he only agreed to do the part for the money. What's a little humiliation compared to big bucks? True. And I was a little resistant to it, but I was uh, going through a divorce I, and I had a young, young son and I thought, 
well, let's not pull some of those no, I don't want to snobby things that I did early in my career. I'll do it because I need the the bread. But the uh, the scripts were it was battle every day. It was, it was not a not a good deal. Sure, people do anything for money. Where'd you get that idea? Well, look at what you're doing. Rounding out the cast was Jason Marsden as Eddie. Ah, oh, come on, Scott, you gotta let me stay over. Hey, I'll let you sneak a peek at Marilyn in the shower. <laughs> and Hilary Van Dyke as Marilyn. This is weird. I I'm trembling. Me too. Derek, would you kiss me? Last time I saw a hand that big, it was in a butcher's window. While each of them seems to respect the performance of the original actors, they also do new things to modernize the characters. One, two, I love you. Three, four, I love you more. Five, six, this is making me sick. Their performances may work individually, but it's their scenes as a family that feel really lacking here. Marilyn, you have to stop finding fault with every boy you meet. Not every man can be a Herman Munster. <laughs> The comedy in the original show rested on the chemistry of the cast, particularly Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis, who had years of experience working together. How could you scare anybody? <laughs> they may have been able to replicate the look of the characters here, but they just couldn't replicate that organic chemistry. Well, it's not quite perfected yet. In other words, it doesn't work. That's what I figured. For instance, here's a scene from the iconic episode, Just Another Pretty Face. <laughs> Get him some water, quickly! <laughs> and now the same scene remade for the monsters today. <laughs> Is that me? No, it's Patrick Swayze. <laughs> it's not just the chemistry that's missing but also the inventiveness of the camera placement, the use of music cues, and the comic pacing. <laughs> A pilot was produced, which connected the original series to this one, explaining that Grandpa invented some kind of sleep chamber, which accidentally caused the monster's family to go to sleep for 22 years. Well, I'm pleased as punch to announce I got my old job back! They were surprised to see me after 22 years, but they said that nobody cared about cremations the way I did. Nothing says loving like someone in the oven. <laughs> this pilot was never aired, though, and the entire plot of that episode would be explained in the opening credits. We went to sleep many years ago, and we woke up with a brand new show. This whole concept was later dropped starting in season two, though and the show never seemed to mention the sleeping chambers again. The Monsters Today was produced for syndication, usually airing Saturday mornings on different channels throughout the US. It could have been worse, he could have ended up on CBS. <laughs> While props and costumes from the original series were able to be recycled, the Monsters' home at Mockingbird Lane had to be redesigned to accommodate the multicam format and studio audience. Why are they using a laugh track? The show was also shot on video, which pales in comparison to the film look of the original series. And to top it all off, we'll get a complimentary videotape to enjoy the rest of our lives. Not me. The cheap look that came from the show being shot on video, as well as the compromises made to the makeup, really give the show a bargain bin feeling. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Everything is so synthetic these days. <laughs> Honestly, there was more thought and hard work put into those Universal Monsters Pepsi commercials from around the same time than was put into this show. Integrity is wonderful. I wish I had some. Looking at the characters, I can't help but think of the we have that at home meme, as these monsters really feel like the monsters at home. Actually, that should have been the title of this show, as the characters rarely venture out of the house anyway. Look. This house has a sense of, of history for us. We've celebrated many a blessed event here. We were married here. Our son was conceived here. For example, in the original Just Another Pretty Face episode, Lily takes Herman to a doctor played by Dom DeLuise for a really funny set piece, while in The Monsters Today, the doctor just comes to the house. And just cut, 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 cut. Cut! 
Now, as this is a show I didn't grow up with, I used the IMDb ratings to pick out which episodes might be good representations of the series. The highest rated episode of Season 1, coming in at just 6, is Computer Mating, which revolves around Grandpa Monster signing up for video dating and falling in love with a woman named Dottie. Every time that Vladdy flashed his bicuspids, all the women swooned! <laughs> of course, it doesn't work out though, and the episode ends with a sappy moment that feels like it was ripped right from Full House. Dear Dottie, the real reason is I'm just not ready for that type of commitment. Yeah, long stream of urine analysis. Ooh. You know, there's a very similar episode in the original series where Grandpa meets a woman through male dating, but it turns out she's a con artist. The episode ends in a way that's actually, you know, funny without the forced sentiment. <laughs> it's clear from watching any episode from the first season that the studio was not concerned with the quality here, but rather quantity, quickly pumping out episodes to sell to TV stations around the country. When she spoke, wolves howled and howled, and my heart began to beat out loud. I knew that I would love her so. She came right out of Edgar Allan's pole. And so he seems the monster rat. And so he seems the monster rat. Despite its rushed quality, the show actually found an audience in preteens, though. And the producers wished to better connect to that demographic for season two. Are we hip or what? I'd say what? As I mentioned, gone was any mention of the sleep chambers and the monsters being from the 60s, as well as those awful theme song lyrics saying as much. The show also doubled down on pop culture references. Oh, and those terrible teens they made married with children look like the Brady Bunch. Eddie Munster debuted this season with a new hairstyle, and ditched his purple suit, beginning to sport more 80s appropriate attire for the rest of the show's run. Edward Wolfgang Munster. You're wearing those hoodlum clothes again. <laughs> Gradually, Herman and Lily also followed suit, wearing more modern, bright clothing. I'm also convinced these episodes aired out of order, though, as the fifth episode deals with Eddie clashing with his parents over his new wardrobe, while the second episode of the same season has Herman and Lily embracing new styles of their own. <laughs> The episode finds the Munsters family relocating to a new apartment after a hurricane destroys part of their home, where they start embracing life in the 80s. That's right, we took out the old gold card and started firing away. As forced as these plot elements are, they at least give the show its own identity. And dare I say it, the writers were actually able to tell jokes that land as a result. Oh, and then we marched in a rally to save the whales. <laughs> Roseanne Barr was there. Talk about self-preservation. <laughs> the first season showed us that the style of the original Munsters could not be replicated, so why not embrace this new setting and try telling new types of stories? How long have you lived here? Uh, ages. Literally. <laughs> Sadly, the show reverted back to its old ways midway through the second season now, with the Munsters back at Mockingbird Lane. Oh, you're so old-fashioned. We are not old-fashioned. We're just set in our ways. But the producers did keep trying new things, like adding guest stars to beef up the show's star power. But don't worry, all of those guest appearances were worked very subtly into the plot. Are you telling me that you would believe Zsa Zsa Gabor? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Subtle. In addition to guest stars, new characters were added to Monster's lure, such as Grandpa's ex-wife and Lily's mother, Katja, in an episode which I swear feels like a Halloween episode of a soap opera. Why don't we just live for the moment? Yeah, long stream of urine analysis. Ooh. We would later also meet Grandpa's brother, Yorga, played by Sandy Barron. My wife is a light eater. As soon as it gets light, she starts eating. <laughs> who would later go on to play Grandpa himself in the Munster's Scary Little Christmas. I can't betray my principles from mere sequel rights. It was clear by season three that the writers were running out of scenarios, though, and that's when they started full-out remaking episodes of the original series. I'm sorry. It's just that I get so moody this time of the month. <laughs> in other episodes, they just threw everything at the wall. Like this one, where Marilyn unleashes a genie that's just Billy Barty. 
I've been powered to carry out your most uh, secret desires. Ooh, even the ones about Mel Gibson? Sorry. For him, there's a waiting list. However, I can get you Jackie Mason immediately. No. No. The show's ratings dwindled as a result, and began being dropped by networks in favor of other programming. You showed him that human dignity is more important than network ratings. The final episode aired on May 25th, 1991, and the show was quickly forgotten about by most kids shortly thereafter. <laughs> I liked it. Universal even seemed to be embarrassed by its existence, as they never released it on physical media and only re-aired the show once in 2008. I don't want to relive my life. I wasn't that hot about living it the first time. <laughs> I'm glad they at least learned from their mistakes, though, as the next Monsters project, Here Come the Monsters, was a marketable improvement in every way. He's got a point, Lily. I just wish I could say the same about the Monsters films that would come after that one. Quiet! And looking back at all these Monsters reboot attempts, there's just only so many times I can say the magic just wasn't there. But with this series especially, the magic just wasn't there. It's shocking that Here Come the Monsters came as close as it did, because all of these other projects have failed in spectacular ways, which honestly is a testament to how truly irreplaceable the original cast is. We're not just the plain old monsters anymore, you know. We're the average American family. But there is one more Monsters remake attempt that I've yet to cover. That one will have to wait till next Halloween, though. Things like that can only happen in America. <laughs> and only on television. <laughs>